I'm usually not one to make a big deal over liked comments or liked tweets. You have to be really careful with the like button. Once you hit the like button on what could be considered a controversial comment or tweet or an offensive comment, you're essentially giving it your endorsement. You are telling the world that you agree with it. Now, if it happens once, twice, maybe three times, who really cares? But when it's a pattern, when it's something that's been happening over a number of years, then it's a completely different story. Once again, this is not about endorsing an opinion that I don't agree with. It is about the blatant hypocrisy at ESPN. Mark Jones has worked at ESPN for over 30 years. That should tell you all you need to know about which aisle of the political spectrum that he sides with. Mark Jones is a social justice warrior, a paid propagandist, a professional victimizer. According to his bio, he is a sportscaster. Tony Romo is a sportscaster. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, James Brown over at CBS, who, by the way, is the youngest looking 70-year-old man that I have ever seen. James Brown has aged unbelievably well. But those guys are sportscasters. Mark Jones is a race baiter, a Kobe crusader, a bullshitter, the male version of Jamel Hill. Basically, he's useless. This is the same man that during an NBA broadcast last year, during the middle of the game, claimed that Jacob Blake was unarmed when he was shot by the police. Now, I'm not sure why Jacob Blake would need to be mentioned during an NBA game. He has no association with the league. But this was an example of someone at ESPN painting a false narrative. Jacob Blake admitted he had a knife when he was shot by the cops. Mark Jones knows this, but again, these people, they never let facts get in the way of their agenda. We all know Rush Limbaugh was a controversial figure. He had millions of ardent supporters, also had millions of detractors. Rush Limbaugh said many controversial things over his 40-year career in radio. But when someone passes away, people tend to celebrate their life. They celebrate their accomplishments, the good things about them. Well, normal people anyway. Miserable assholes like Mark Jones, they use it as an opportunity to tarnish their legacy. When Rush Limbaugh died, Mark Jones liked a tweet by some dude named Bishop Talbert Swan. I had never heard of this man before. I looked him up. Wouldn't surprise me if this man identifies as a swan. This man is supposedly a, a pastor or a bishop, some type of Christian leader. Look at this tweet. Yeah, yeah. Seems real Christ-like to me, wishing someone would rot in hell. The Swan had his Twitter account suspended in 2018 because he used a racial slur when describing Candace Owens. He has a history of hate speech, but unlike Donald Trump, the Swan was able to get his Twitter account reactivated. He credited his thousands of followers for pressuring Twitter to reactivate his account. Thousands of my fellow virgins put down their Star Wars action figures and petitioned Twitter to reinstate my account. These are the types of people that Mark Jones endorses or identifies with. But the hate on over half of the American population, it doesn't end there. Last year, Mark Jones participated in a virgin circle jerk when Kobe Covington had his jaw broken. When Nick Bosa suffered a leg injury last September, was lost for the season, Mark Jones liked the following video, which featured the caption, Nick Bosa, when he realizes he can't stand for the national anthem the rest of the season. First of all, Mark Jones is from Canada. He's Canadian. So if he doesn't want to stand for the American National Anthem, he can take his ass back to Toronto. But number two, I can understand, I can kind of understand why Mark Jones would relate to this video. This is the face. These are the sounds that social justice warriors make every night when they realize another day has passed and they have once again failed to get laid. This is a prominent figure at ESPN celebrating the fact that athletes are injured, all because their political beliefs are different or they're white. I'll let you decide. But just think about this for a second. What do you think would happen if LeBron James broke both of his hands and he couldn't tweet racial propaganda for six months? 
Tim Tebow, he likes and retweets commentary from people who are celebrating the fact that LeBron James is temporarily silenced. What do you think would happen? ESPN would fire Tim Tebow in seconds. They would have a picture of him being crucified on ESPN.com. They would ruin his reputation. But Mark Jones, he gets a pass. We can't reprimand or fire Mark Jones. We will be accused of being racist. Stephen A. Smith would go on woke take and he would start crying. Another black man lost his job because of the evil white man. I must take a stand against this racism. But please, please don't stop paying me ESPN. I will continue to say whatever you want me to say. But there's more. Let's continue with the hypocrisy. September 2020, the same month Nick Bosa injured his leg. Mark Jones is set to call a college football game for ESPN. A couple of days before the game, he tweets that he is going to tell the cops that are there for security, don't bother, take the day off. Why? Mark Jones said that he didn't want the cops to shoot him because of his black skin. He went on to say police have never kept him safe in a protest. Um, well, you want to know how to stay safe in a Black Lives Matter protest? Don't go. Your odds of living increase exponentially when you're not in a crowd of people burning buildings and rioting. He goes on to claim that cops have pulled guns on him before. Really? When? When? When has that happened? Mark Jones has been in the public eye for over 30 years. You mean to tell me an altercation happened between him and the police where guns were drawn and we've never heard about it? Yeah, right, dude. The dumbasses who follow you may buy that bullshit. I'm not. I could sit here for another 30 minutes and give you example after example of Mark Jones being a virgin sympathizer. But let's go ahead and get to the most recent case from this past weekend. Following the Packers' loss to the Niners Saturday night, Mark Jones hit the like button so many times that he broke his thumb. As predicted, the second Aaron Rodgers lost, the Kobe Crusaders came out of their closets and tied the Kobe to the loss. Let's all come out of the nerdium and express our baseless opinion. Check out some of these tweets endorsed by Mark Jones. The last one, the last one is my favorite. It appears Mark Jones loaned Aaron Rodgers his favorite dress and his favorite wig for this picture. I guess they're the same size. These are the types of people working at ESPN. Mark Jones is 60 years old. A 60-year-old man, old enough to be a grandfather. And he spends his weekend promoting hatred and divisiveness. What a sad, pathetic existence. But let's get back to the hypocrisy for a second. I'm not even going to bring race into this. I'm not even going to tie it into it. If a black common sense thinker worked at ESPN, now I know that's impossible. I know that's impossible. Common sense strictly outlawed at ESPN. But just go with me for a second. If a black common sense thinker worked at ESPN, and was endorsing people on Twitter who were denigrating Joe Biden, LeBron James, or God forbid, agreed with someone like John Stockton. How long do you think they would work at ESPN? Let's not even think about a white common sense thinker doing this. We all know the outcome of that scenario. One of my friends called me yesterday. He coaches football at the high school level. Started off talking about Sean Payton leaving New Orleans, but the conversation shifted to ESPN. And he told me, he said, I can't even watch ESPN. They don't have analysts anymore. They don't have people who can break down game film, explain what's happening. It's just become so political. I was like, yeah, I know, dude. ESPN has become more political than CNN. It is the victim network, a network full of people looking for ways to victimize themselves. Eventually, there will be no more use for networks like ESPN. In the future, and this could be far into the future, but Leagues like the NFL and the NBA, they will stream their games on their own platforms. They won't need ESPN for broadcasting. They'll keep all the advertising revenue to themselves. And at that point, what would be the purpose of ESPN? All they would be left with is opinion shows, talking heads. The problem is a large majority of the people don't share or want to hear these opinions at ESPN. The network has one star, Stephen A. Smith. That's it. They have one household name. ESPN used to be full of stars. Dan Patrick, Stuart Scott, Chris Berman, Mike and Mike. Remember when ESPN Radio was dominant? Can you name one show on ESPN Radio right now? The network is run by cowards, people who are afraid of weak people. 
You look at organizations that embrace cowardice and social justice, MSNBC, CNN, ESPN, the NBA, what do they all have in common? Declining ratings. All right, let me know what you guys think. Mark Jones promoting bullshit and being allowed to keep his job at ESPN. Now, I haven't asked this question in a while, but do any of you guys even watch ESPN anymore? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Patreon link, description below. If you want to financially support the channel, head on over to Patreon and sign up. Always optional, but always appreciated. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. The topic of this video actually came from one of you guys emailing me. He sent me the story last night. Anytime you come across something that pertains to the channel, shoot me an email about it. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL 84. I'll see you guys later.